All right. So from the Daily Mail, more than 900 Missouri residents who snitched on lockdown rule breakers fear retaliation after their details are leaked online. Now, you know I love pulling apart the mainstream media, deconstructing the propaganda. Already, even the story reveals a lie in the headline itself. I should say a, a bad spin misrepresentation. And it's that the details were leaked. No, they, they weren't leaked. They were published legally. So first of all, yeah, snitches get stitches. And this is absolute bullshit. If you are reporting someone for a victimless crime, you are helping the government terrorize your fellow citizens. You are aiding the government in its criminality by giving them an excuse to go after people who are not criminals as if they were. So this gets to some complicated things, right? Snitches get stitches. That really only applies, as far as I'm concerned, that really only applies to victimless crimes. If, if there's a legitimate, like, like for example, me, on my property here at the Garden of Freedom, I'm in charge. I'm the authority. If you come to me and go, that guy said something I didn't like. Yeah, well, the, that's allowed here. Or you try to get me to go after somebody for something that I shouldn't go after them for. You know, fuck you. You're 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 a bad snitch. But if you come to me and go, hey, Adam, someone's stealing your shit over there. Or if somebody on your property is getting victimized by someone else on your property. Yeah, that's legitimately reporting a real crime. That's not snitching. I know. Snitching, you know, I, I'm I'm redefining it here to be an illegitimate act of reporting someone who should not be reported and aiding an authority doing something that they should not be doing. So snitch, they have to put it in quotes here because you know it's considered a bad thing. But no, uh, yes, it should be considered a bad thing. Snitching is, 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 is horrible, especially the way they're referring to it here. So just for some background, St. Louis County, Missouri asked people in their community to report people who are violating guidelines. There were 900 people who submitted tips and 29 businesses were reprimanded. Now, fortunately, this didn't go to the way worse scenario possible, right? Where they got reported and then they got shot by cops. You know, like it's not, you know, because I mean, how, think about it this way. And let me put this out for anybody who disagrees with me on, on victimless crimes, who thinks that like people should be locked up for smoking pot. Let's just think about the mechanism here. You see someone smoking pot, you call the police on them. They come and the, the person who's smoking pot has a dog and the dog gets shot and the cops freak out. They, 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 they kill the dog. And what do you know? Maybe, maybe they accidentally uh, got the wrong address and they accidentally confused some firearms ownership records and they go, oh, this is a dangerous individual who you got a uh, report on for smoking pot. We're going to start with a flashbang grenade and whoops, throw it into a baby's crib and permanently disfigure a child, which has happened. Or, oh, we're just going to shoot into the house because we heard a noise and they kill someone in their bed, as recently happened in Maryland for someone for gun ownership. Duncan Lemp, thank you. Uh, there, these, these, do, you, do you really want to call that? That's, that's the threat that you are bringing upon someone when you report them to the police. You deserve retaliation. You deserve to be outcast. And that's why I'm so glad to be bringing this story to you today. So many tip store, tipsters reported their own bosses and their own jobs. Talk about biting the hand that feeds you. And they're not forcing you to do anything. As one tipster said, I'm worried about someone showing up at my door, showing up at my workplace, or me getting fired for doing what is right. No, you did what is legal. You did what the government said what is right. Those things rarely line up. I, for one, will always do what is right over what is legal. And what you did here, just like government, is something wrong under the color of law. There are a few cops out there who are not deliberately, consciously supporting an evil system or even trying to fight it, but the majority of cops are. They are the kids in high school who got teased and are looking to take it out on people as an adult. Yes, there's a lot of ego and insecurity manifest in law enforcement in America. We have a system that deliberately encourages that. Those are the people that politicians want enforcing their will. 
And yes, you can be too smart to be a cop. This has been upheld by a Supreme Court decision from Connecticut from several decades ago. When no, uh, yeah, and it was in the 90s, I think. When there was a, there was a, yeah. someone who applied to be a cop was turned down because they scored too high on the IQ test. They appealed, and the decision was actually upheld. Yes, according to government, you can be too smart to be a cop in America. And now we see there are lots of dumb people who probably just didn't qualify to be cops. I wonder if these are all the the people who were, let's just put it nicely, not physically qualified to pass the police physical fitness tests, which obviously are a very low bar to clear. These are the busybodies, and they're getting what's coming to them. And I want to point out that the system that they used here is such an abject failure that they could not even protect their identities. Not only that, I shouldn't say that they couldn't. They didn't even try. In fact, they set the system up that way. So again, the leaked part, here we go. How did it come out? Jared Tosh shared the file of complaint emails. The actual emails themselves were all released in a Facebook group and said, I released the info in an attempt to discourage such behavior in the future. Thank you, Jared Tosh. You are a hero. As of Sunday, oh, of course, they, sorry, I, I wanted to skip this bullet point, but since I accidentally started it, I'll go ahead and read it to point out that the Daily Mail had to add the fear mongering in here. As of Sunday, there have been at least 8,437 cases in Missouri and 376 deaths. <laughs> oh, okay. And they, they, they put in separately, 3,433 of these cases have been in St. Louis County and 177 deaths there. So, getting into the story to get to these details about how it happened. Some people may not have read the small print, submitted tips via an online form and email from the end of March. Many have asked for their communications to remain private, however. Tough shit too late. Because what happened is that the documents published online, shared on social media, as Jared Toch says, and this is a great quote from Jared, here you go, the gallery of snitches, busybodies, and employees who rat out their own neighbors and employers over the panic pandemic. So, moving on to this exact legal specificity, because this is really important of how this works. And this came from St. Louis County, uh, officially, they said in a tweet, if non-essential businesses are continuing operations, please re report violations by email to County Counselor COVID-19. They set up a separate email for this tip line, of course. And in the emails, in one of the emails that was published, these are some quotes. CJ, you've got this graphic in there. Please respect my privacy by not naming me. Please keep this anonymous as this particular company is known for reprisals. I would like to anonymously report my employer that won't close amid stay-at-home orders. I would like to remain anonymous. Now, just to point this out, this isn't, I would like to report my employer who is forcing me at gunpoint to stay at work despite the stay-at-home order. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See, if it was that, then we might have a problem. But no, we have an employer who, despite government making it harder for them to do business, is still offering you a job. You're fucking welcome, you ungrateful piece of shit. Really? Okay. Maybe they're not ungrateful. Maybe they're just dumb, conditioned, propagandized, intellectually lazy, and have fallen for all of the government propaganda. So, in this particular instance, so. They are so okay. The St. Louis County Executive's Director of Communications, Doug Moore, explained that they are not allowed to redact. In this particular instance, our county counselor's office consulted with the Attorney General's office on releasing the list of those who had filed complaints against county businesses. We were told all the information was public and we should not redact except for HIPAA information. That's health insurance, privacy, affordability, whatever act. Um, and that's it's it, it's funny that does not actually apply here. HIPAA, although there might be some government ex thing that it includes in HIPAA, but HIPAA technically only applies to healthcare providers and prevents them from sharing your private health information. So 
let's see the rest of the post. But it's okay. So here's the, the, from Jared. Uh, Panicdemic. A tiny few look like they have legit beefs. Most do not. But it's all public record, and you make the call. This fishing expedition by the county resulted in at least 50 local businesses being notified by letter to close down or else. This is a result. Here we go. This is a result of my sunshine law request initiated after the St. Louis County government asked for info to enlist soldiers in its war on small business for lack of any other solution. Yeah. I don't know how else to wrap this up, except... CJ, can, can you pull up the, the two last graphics that are in the story? Uh, coronavirus in the USA. I, there's so many, so many good song parodies based on this. Um, born in the USA, coronavirus in the USA. But just, just look at this graphic. 1,176,548 total cases. No asterisk, unless you count the big splatter. That's not a splatter. That's a that's a 3D model of the coronavirus behind that number. And then upper right, 68,066 deaths. And then they have the map, and it's all red and orange. Now, what? Yeah. Now, this ties in to uh, another one of our stories today. You see on this map, South Dakota, where our producer CJ is, is in very, very light orange. And it is not the scariest mark on the map, but this is obviously a graphic intended to scare you. In South Dakota, they just threw a parade for Governor Kristi Noem, who refused to shut down their state. Quite a difference from the governors across the nation facing protests. And she has taken a lot of heat from the media and other critics for refusing to issue a state lockdown. But on Monday, fellow South Dakota and CJ, I hope libertarians were there, I have to assume, there was a parade with safe distancing, apparently, uh, in a display that evoked a touching reaction from the governor. We got this story from theblaze.com. Not quite mainstream media, and, and this is, uh, you know, really beautiful that there is this positive reinforcement and this positive feedback. The uh, a tweet from, from Governor Nome: I am so blessed to serve the people of the great state of South Dakota. You folks made my day. Really touching story and a, a great sign. Uh, that there is appreciation for freedom in America, for libertarian policies. Now, uh, I know that Christy Noem is not a libertarian, not by a long shot, but the fact that she's taking this huge step in the right direction, not just at random, not just for political posturing, but in a moment of crisis, having the courage to do the right thing and not lock uh, Adam, if I may, this is my governor, and I just... I have to remind every libertarian when we bring up Christy Noem that she passed successfully the riot boosting laws and then lost in the state Supreme Court because it violated the First Amendment. This is the same woman that thinks that you snort hemp to get high. This is the same woman that still thinks that cannabis THC is more deadly than methamphetamine. I mean, so at the end of the day, she is the she is not a libertarian. And the fact that people are blowing this up like she's the most libertarian governor and all of this is why I think it's a giant joke. But that's just me personally, sir. Okay, no, no. I'm so glad that we have you here for this, CJ. Uh, and if, if you could, could you pull up the next graphic on the Daily Mail story, the, the escalation here? Um, so I'm, I'm glad you're, you're there to put a, put a check on this. I still, CJ, I still want to be uh encouraging and and positive towards uh any any government official at any time who who takes a legitimate principled stand for freedom i think that's what this is uh because maybe she did the calculus in her head and said okay i'm going to be the one i'm going to be more popular i'm in south dakota low population state anyway look at me this is political pandering but she could have gone the other way with it she could have just as easily, especially with her status support, gone the other way with it and said, 
hey, Trump gave me the excuse for a lockdown. I'm going to take it. I'm going to increase my power. I'm going to increase the relevance of the state government here in South Dakota. And in doing so, probably put more money in my pocket, probably put more power in my hands, probably make it more easy for me to manipulate the process, have control over the republic. I mean, there's so many other ways. But that's exactly what she's doing, sir. She's, She's literally telling Donald Trump she wants to take the billions of dollars. She has an incentive for more cases. She has an incentive for positive cases. And she wants to take that money and spend it on pheasants. It's it's a joke. This is <laughs> this is a this okay, is a so joke. Maybe, so may, okay, okay, CJ, fair enough. Maybe she's trying to have it both ways in that sense. She's trying to get the federal money and still trying to be the hero in the state. I still want to at least. I I think at very least. And and CJ, you might disagree. And I certainly respect everybody else's interpretation of this. If you really want to look into the story, of course, links in the show notes. You want to really get into who the, the the governor of South Dakota, Christy Nome, cares about, that's fine. I think that in this individual moment, it was legitimate political courage in her, at least in a small way, doing the right thing, getting praise and reward for it. That's nice. Let's celebrate even these baby steps towards libertarianism. But back to the Daily Mail story. Yeah, please put up this other scary graphic uh, on, on the screen here, uh, CJ, because this is a cumul this this is an extremely extremely misleading graphic because this is a graphic of the cumulative coronavirus cases now remember this includes everybody who went to a doctor with a cough who was told by the doctor you probably have corona we don't have tests go home for 14 days i'll add you to my list So I get a little more money from it, from health insurance, and our state gets more money, and blah, blah, blah. Everybody who's tied into this racket gets taken care of. Everybody gets their beaks wet. And this is not a good graphic by by any stretch of the imagination of trying to accurately portray reality. If you did a chart that was how murders have escalated in the U.S., and you didn't drop off the ones that happened yesterday from your count today. How many? Well, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh, 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 the, the murder rate is S murder cases of S. Look how many people have been murdered over the last year in America every day. It's more. Yeah, the rate. Look at the rate, asshole. Really? Really? I mean, this is just this is so misleading. That it should completely discredit any sources behind it calling themselves journalists. All right, we're going to do a long show today.